This podcast is brought to you by Knowledge at Wharton. For more information, please visit knowledge.wharton.upenn.edu. Northrop Grumman is a global company in which we deal with security solutions for uh, the, the, very, the vast challenges that many nations and many governments have. Uh, we look at that in really three ways. Uh, one is we provide systems for military dominance. Secondly, we provide systems that provide for regular warfare, which is a, a very big challenge in today's world. And thirdly, we provide solutions for what we call securing the commons. And it's uh, critical infrastructure protection, it's cybersecurity, it's space, it's the open oceans. It's the way to keep populations, people, and, and governments safe and secure and able to continue the things that they need to do. Well, in our particular company, we have a very strong cash flow, so the financial crisis from that aspect has not affected us at all. Uh, there are the broader effects of the government in which we are running a deficit in the United States government right now. And so that has led some to believe that there may be some sort of fallout in spending on security. Uh, while I think there will be uh, a government pressures in order to try to make sure they spend that money wisely, I do believe that security is an important issue. The nation will continue to spend on security and we think there's a bright future for our company and for the types of solutions we bring. Uh, we started a process um, six months a year ago in which uh, we ask ourselves the question, what could happen in the world in the next year to, to 10 years? And we routinely do that uh, with our senior leadership. And for example, we asked ourselves, what would happen if there was a global economic crisis? And we laid out a number of steps that we would do, uh, take on if that came to bear. And as it turned out, a lot of those things came to fruition and we had a plan in place for what we would go do and we we're executing that plan. We first laid out what would be the signposts? What would be the things that would indicate to us that the world was starting to go in that direction? And then we kept track and looked for those signposts and as we saw it starting going in that direction, we then said, um, what are the products that are going to be needed uh, despite this crisis? What are the products that might be the types of things that might not be uh, needed as much? And what are the products that are going to be new things that the government's going to need as we're going through this situation? And we have developed campaigns or strategies in each one of those on how we can offer uh, technologically differentiated solutions to many problems with that crisis going on. Listening to our customer and knowing what their problems are is really vital to our business. We spend a lot of time with our customers understanding their needs so that we can respond better to what they do need. We have a robust investment in uh, research and development, first of all, but secondly, uh, it goes back to what you mentioned before. It's knowing our customer and knowing the types of things that they are worried about. Um, you know, what is my customer worried about at night? What keeps him sleepless? And those are the things that we want to get out in front of, invest in. Uh, and let me just mention one, cybersecurity. Uh, we have become a nation so invested in digital technologies. Should someone find a way to take those digital technologies down, it would be of great damage to our nation from a security, economic, and many other aspects. So we know that our customer is worried about that, so we have put a lot of resources against looking for solutions in that area. Communications, 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 that's it. If you get people together and give them um, a forum where they can speak freely with their ideas and not be criticized, but take new ideas and open them and embrace them and really expose them to the light of day in a fair and honest way, then people do that more. So the more you can encourage that type of communication instead of just old think, the more you get people involved, and I'm a believer that two heads are better than one and a hundred heads are better than, than just one. Now the challenge is to take all those ideas and then make them into an action plan. 
And so that's the second step of it. Because just getting a lot of ideas and writing them down on a piece of paper doesn't do you any good. Taking the best and brightest of those ideas and putting the resources against implementing them has to be a neck down process and you have to do that in a way that people see and there's transparency in it and they understand why those decisions are made. If you encourage those types of things, you can have that type of communication. But it's something that you have to work on every day. Just because you did it last month doesn't mean it's going to continue again. So you need people that are uh, constantly looking at that aspect and encouraging it. I think that uh, as the new administration thinks through what the strategies will be, there will be some shift in where they put their emphasis. I think the major challenge is keeping track of that and staying ahead of that and offering solutions in the uh, new ideas area of the things that they will be worried about in the future. And actually getting out of it in front of it uh, in enough time so that you can really respond in a timely manner, that's what's really important. For more business news and analysis from Knowledge at Wharton, please visit knowledge.wharton.upenn.edu.